Hello, and welcome to HR Executive Exchange. I'm Melody Reagan, the CEO of Eye to Eye Workforce and your host. HR Executive Exchange is all about everything HR throughout the life cycle of a worker. When you think about um, talent today, that covers everything from acquisition, through to development, through to retirement, and yes, even when we have to let somebody go. On top of that, with HR Executive Exchange, we explore what talent means for your organization, but we also cover what it means for your career and you. Today, our topic is leadership. I'm so excited about this one because one of the number one reasons that workers leave their jobs, it's really about their boss, and we have a very impressive panel today, too. So what is leadership? It's the act of leading a group. Um, the other thing that they say is the state of being a leader, and in flatter organizations, it's not just about positional power. So our guest today, we have Rory McLuster. Rory is the, um, she is the exec, uh, I'm going to do this, the Deputy, Deputy Executive, Executive Director, Director. <laughs> I got this, um, of OHR for the City and County of Denver. Yes. And we also have with us David Scott, who is the Director of HR and Training for Encore Electric. Now before we jump in, I'm actually going to ask each of our guests to tell us a little bit about your background, because you have done so much in your career mm -hmm. from an HR and leadership development perspective. So Rory, please share with us a little bit about your background. Sure, I'm happy to. I've been in HR for 20 plus years and I've worked in many different industries, so telecom, global shipping, uh, technology services, and I've also uh, led teams in international arenas, so domestic and international groups. So a pretty broad spectrum, and my core focus in those areas has always been on leadership development, executive coaching, and uh, culture change. Fantastic, and by the way, for the organization that mm -hmm. you are currently, um, the um, Executive Deputy Director. <laughs> Something like that, but yes. <laughs> you know what it's like it's like once I get something in my head it's how do I get it out it's there. but um, anyway do me a favor and tell people a little bit about the organization that you manage today so mm -hmm. number of people throughout the city etc right well in the city we have about 11,000 employees I lead the HR service teams or the customer facing teams to many of those business leaders around the city we have um, over 30 what we call agencies which are different business sectors and um, and so I lead the teams that are customer facing I also lead the communications team so building the communication strategy um, for the OHR organization um, as well as the employee relations teams fantastic mm -hmm. thank you for that mm -hmm. and um, David um, yeah. welcome do thank me you. a favor and um, would you please share a little bit about your background yeah as a matter of fact I, uh, I um, after earning my master's I began my career at the uh, city and county of Denver. And oh, I didn't know that. I learned something about you today. How about that? Career Service Authority. And I loved it because I started in recruiting and raised my hand to do other things. And mm -hmm. we'd given those opportunities to do the things and ultimately became a generalist. And, and I spent the last uh, about 20 years in uh, electrical construction working for Encore Electric. Fantastic. All right, well, we're going to kind of jump in, um, and I want to ask some questions. We're going to start off about leadership, and why did I pick this as a topic today? I'm going to share with you why we're covering it is I have conversations with so many people, and a common thread is we have a leadership crisis going on in America. What do each of you think about do we have a leadership crisis happening in America? I, I think we do, uh, but I don't think it, it's now. I think it's it's been developing for the last uh, last couple of decades. Actually, it's it's when did we stop wanting to work with each other? And we there's a book called uh, Leadership and, and Self Deception by the Arbiter Institute, uh -huh. and the, um, shout out for those guys. It's a <laughs> fantastic book. If you haven't read it, pick it up. Um, it talks about uh, are you, if leading from within a box, you, you actually absolutely can't do it. We, we all climbed in our own boxes, and we and somewhere along the road, we quit treating people as people, and you know, with hopes and desires and dreams just like our own. 
and we become entrenched in what we believe mm -hmm. and nobody else's opinions matter. And that's, that's I think, at the root cause of, of the leadership crisis. By the way, I, I think that you make a really great point that it's been developing. But I've heard something, you're saying it, it's treating people as people. So Roy, tell me, what do you think about our leadership crisis? It feels like a crisis. And so, you know, if you just look at national politics and the paper or the news every day is a focus on um, you know, lack of job creation. It's challenges with race relations, challenges with gender politics, challenges with health care, and the list goes on and on. And I think to uh, citizens, it feels a little divisive. It's unsettling and it's, it, it causes fear. And so I think from my perspective, I look at that as that is kind of the bucket of symptoms, so to speak, that would certainly suggest right. there is a leadership vacuum. Um, fantastic. Well, uh, then let me ask you this question. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of why is leadership important? So we're discussing it as a topic, but why? Mm -hmm. So yeah. we have a crisis. Does it matter? So why is leadership important? I think that's a question that many businesses are asking, mm -hmm. right? Because some believe it is and some don't. I think um, we are grounded as businesses. So. Focusing from leadership, a focus on leadership from the organizational perspective, mm -hmm. and so we're grounded in you know interrelationships with the people in the organization. We're grounded in that, meaning that as humans, mm -hmm. we're kind of messy, right? <laughs> so we we bring our attitudes to work. We bring good, bad behaviors. We have challenges. We have issues. But that all uh, comes to bear in the work environment. And so the question is, to what degree does that touch the work? And I believe that it touches it rather significantly, right? And so I, I think many leaders are very comfortable with the work, with the products, with the services, with the running the business, but less comfortable with mastering the people dynamics that impact that business. And so one of the things I believe is that you, you might have the most amazing business plan. Mm -hmm but it becomes nothing more than a wonderful idea on paper if you don't have the people capability and the will to execute that plan. You know what, that, um, that actually makes me, as I'm pondering it with people mm -hmm. in leadership, mm -hmm. You talk about the skills. We teach people the skills for their basic job. You need mm -hmm. to be a technician. Right. Mm -hmm. You need to know how to drive a, a vehicle. Right. You know, you need to do a certain operation, whatever that is. We're always teaching them that. We yeah. actually don't teach people how to be leaders. We just kind of throw them into that job. And voila, you're a leader now. So it's kind of an important thing. So why is it, I 100% I agree with you, it's incredibly important. What do you think the impacts are, David, of um, poor leadership? I think the impacts of poor leadership, the organizational failure. Mm -hmm. You know, it, 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 that's at the at the heart of it. If you don't have a strong leader, um, then people people seek to, to to follow. You know, people seek to you know they, they look for guides. Um, so if you don't have a guide, there's going to be you're absolutely right. It's going to it's going to be messy. It is messy. That's a, that's By the way, I I think that's a really strong statement for everybody in our audience to realize. I think that you're onto something. If you don't nurture and have good leadership, it's called you have great potential for organizational failure. Mm -hmm. And um, things that happen with organizational failure, what do we have? Unhappy workers. There's a reason that only 34% of the workforce in America is classed as engaged. Mm -hmm. And then you end up with people who are actively disengaged, that disrupt mm -hmm. everybody else. And your margins drop, your costs go up. I mean, it's like in terms of overall performance and, and unhappiness. And when I think about a job, it's over half of my waking time. It matters. It is part of my identity. And to be able to go to work and have a great environment, and a great environment doesn't mean that somebody isn't holding me accountable mm -hmm. and that I can't do good work, but who is it that is actually creating that environment for me? Yeah, who is leading me? Who is taking care of me? So along those lines, just for our audience so that they know, mm -hmm. you know, what, what is a good leader? What is a good leader? How do I, if I want to be a good leader, what does that mean? It, it's, to me, it, it's three things. It's character, competence, and commitment. 
You know, you have to have a, a good character. You have to have mm -hmm. a good moral character. Um, and, you know, that's, um, and then you have to know what you're talking about. And then finally, you have to, leadership is not something you can turn on and off. It is, it, it, if you decide to be a leader, be a leader. And that's 24 hours a day. You know what, you just brought something up there that I talk to you as well. And when I work with different organizations, I let them know, we used to believe I'm this person at work, I'm this person at home. <laughs> you know what, I'm all person. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I don't separate. And um, the other thing with 24 hour, um, you know, we're now the 24 hour organizations, 24 hour workforce. I might be working until six o'clock, take a break, get back online at nine. It's a very integrated life, and I can't separate that. And so I love that you said to be a good leader. It's kind of a 24-hour-a-day mm -hmm. job. It, it, it absolutely is. So, Roy, what, what do you think makes a good leader? And then we are going to give everybody some tips on how to be a good leader. So what makes a good leader? I think, uh, so I look at it as what makes an effective leader. Oh, nice. right? And so I, I don't know that it's good, bad, or otherwise, but what makes an effective leader for that organization. And I think when you look at leaders across a broad spectrum, so whether you're leading a country or you know a major business or a team, there's certain skills or, or characteristics that, right. that most effective leaders would demonstrate. And I think the number one skill that all effective leaders have is a keen sense of self. Yes. And so you have to be very self-aware because you have to understand how do my words and my actions, what impact does that have on the people around me? Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important. So that would be the starting point. By the way, you've tied into something that's also um, for all of us that is um, we're learning to be effective in our careers. Mm -hmm. It starts with self-awareness. It starts Absolutely. with ourselves. So having that self-awareness, mm -hmm. whether you're a leader or not, because here's the other thing about leadership, whether you are in a formal leadership position, mm -hmm. as organizations have become flat, mm -hmm. we all have to don the hat of leadership at different mm -hmm. times. I might be leading a group or I might be formally leading a department so it starts mm -hmm. with self-awareness. Fantastic. Um, so what other traits um, would you say from a leadership and how people should show up and what they should know? A good question, actually. I want to I address this point, and that is, yeah. that, um, you know, leaders are, it's not just the person at the top. Mm -hmm. it's, it's throughout the organization. I think uh, from, um, uh, I think it's W. Gordon Associates, Gortech, they, they define the term super leadership, and that is hmm. leaders at all levels of the organization. You know, it, it's just showing up and, and being someone that people can be passionate and excited about uh, working with. You know, I, I agree with that, and I would just add something to that if you don't mind. Is yeah, that please. I don't know that everyone is a leader, although everyone can be a leader. Correct. But you have to want to be a leader. Absolutely. It's a right? there's, a, there's an ownership and an accountability mm -hmm. with being a leader in an organization. Mm -hmm. And so even though we're not necessarily talking about um, formal position, so yep. individual contributors, but you have to want to do that. You have to be mindful of how you impact the people around you. Mm -hmm. You have to have a passion and a vision for something beyond today, mm -hmm. right? And so I think those individuals that uh, comprehend that, then they can be effective leaders. Mm -hmm. They have to want to do that. You know what? Um, I'm going to do a little bit of a curveball. Uh-oh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're going to catch that, right? <laughs> we'll see. Uh, so I, I actually want to know, you know, what are some leadership mistakes that you have each seen in Ooh. your careers? Because You've had some pretty long and illustrious careers where you've seen all kinds of things. That is another thing about our show that I just have to make. Uh, um, you see everything in HR. The stories I have to tell. I, I think somewhere I think um, with the show I need to start putting little snippets of, can you imagine? And then tell the story. <laughs> can you imagine? So what are, what are some things that you have seen in your career? You know, it's uh, actually I've got an anecdotal story. I was I was asking the question in in, uh, in our leadership course, what is leadership? And one of the students he literally said, stood up and he says, "It's got two thumbs and it's right here." <laughs> <laughs> 
you know, humility. Absolutely. <laughs> a leader must be self-aware and must have humility. And that, the, 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 the guy ultimately didn't make it. It's just, it's just, because he, he just didn't get it. You know, you, you, um, it's, it's just, uh, it's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. Mm -hmm. So what are some things that you've seen, Roy? Things well, not to do for our audience. Just make a note. These are things not to do. Look, this is something that happens in many organizations, but I'll use myself as the example oh, okay. of, of what not to do. Because that's leadership perfect. is a journey. It's about learning, and that's how you get better, right? Mm -hmm. um, so without mentioning the name of the company, so I worked you know, early on in my career with an organization and you know, was promoted into uh, this organization and was leading people but I'd never had any experience and you talked about that early in the show you put people in positions but you don't prepare them for that so I thought okay let me just mimic the people around me it was a very authoritarian environment and lots of yelling and screaming and that's how you got things done so I tried that wasn't a good fit Doesn't for me work. right yeah. wasn't, wasn't, a, wasn't a good look on me so um, I luckily had a mentor that took interest in me and spent time to help me understand what leadership was and how I could have impact differently, mm -hmm. right? But I think that is gen uh, kind of a general starting point for many young folks in an organization is you're put into a position, you don't understand the people dynamics, you're just thinking about the work and you are ill prepared to deal with the behaviors and attitudes and all of those people things That's that right. impact you on a daily basis so you know I'd love to give a shout out and go out and apologize to some of those people early on because <laughs> I am a much better leader now but um, but that's how you learn and and those are some of the mistakes you make early on is you know cho choose who you be careful about who you choose to imitate mm -hmm. By the way, I think that's great advice, and all too often, in organizations, the way people become leaders is they just by doing, they mm -hmm. get promoted. Absolutely. So one thing that I would have as an advice for anybody who wants to be a leader, get some formal training. Yes. So let's talk just a little bit mm -hmm. as we um, will be bringing our show to a close, but you both have some fantastic leadership development programs. Mm -hmm. So would you share a little bit about what are some of the things that um, someone should look for in a leadership development program and how you've gone about it. And in fact, for people in our audience, they should be thinking about how do I create a leadership program for my own organization? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an interesting, um, interesting question. So how would I create that for my organization? I think first, when you look at organizations, many of them have this mission statement either on a wall or on a pamphlet. Mm -hmm people are our most valuable asset. Mm -hmm. I would say, number one, ask those people if they believe mm -hmm. that to be true. Do they feel that that is really the value Excellent. of your organization? Mm -hmm. That's excellent, yeah. And when you do that, that then provides some information where you can explore the concept of, well, then what, what should le leadership look like in this organization? And from that starting point, you then decide what are the competencies, what are the behaviors, what are the, those characteristics that would be important in our organization? Yeah, fantastic. And then you build around that because that's how you build your training programs, right? That's how you build your um, experiences for those employees, yes. but, but it has to be anchored to something that is valuable for your organization, not what everyone else's organization is doing. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It, it's not it's not plug and play. Mm -hmm. and, and in fact, developing our leadership program, it, it took about two years to develop it. Mm -hmm. we, we went out and asked leaders in the organization, people we respected, we mm -hmm. asked the question, what is leadership? Mm -hmm. And then based on those uh, those answers and the resources that they provided, that's that's we mm -hmm. built the program about what is leadership at Encore Electric. Exactly. So. Yeah. yeah, I start. I can remember starting with um, a group of 13 senior leaders in a room, and you know, there was a lot of concern in the organization, and they definitely wanted to start a focus on leadership. And it really did start with that question, well, what should leadership look like? But as we went around the room, each of them had a very different response. Well, then think about the employees. Well, what are they held accountable to if 13 of the leaders all have a different idea of what this leadership should look like? So it literally is first, asking the questions of the right people, making sure that you then begin to build around 
what that should look like in your organization. Mm -hmm. And that led us to building a very strong coaching program, for example, at the city. We're yep. very focused on coaching skills because I believe right. that's fundamental to any leader, regardless of level, is how you have conversations with people. And so communications is number one. So coaching is, is very, very big for us. Excellent. Well, you know what? It's amazing how time flies mm. when you are having fun. <laughs> um, I'm going to ask each of you if you had one bit of advice mm -hmm. that you would give someone to be a strong leader, to be an effective leader. I like mm -hmm. your phrase, Rory. What would be that one bit of advice you would give that person? Hmm. David, what first. would be that yeah. advice first? <laughs> uh, I, I would say just um, be open, and you're absolutely right, be self-aware. And self-awareness is about asking the people in your life who are important to you, mm -hmm. what does it look like to be on the other side of me? And, you know, it's, it's two things, humble and confident. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that people will follow that. I, I appreciate that. I, I would suggest this, that, you know, reflect on that one time in your career where you worked for someone and you did not feel good about being yeah. there and yeah. you were looking for the exit strategy. Yes. That tells you a lot about what leadership shouldn't be. Like, how did you feel? Just reflect on that. And then conversely, mm -hmm. hopefully you have many experiences where you've worked for someone where you feel really pumped up to go to work. You feel like I contribute at a high level and I'm excited to be here. So if you reflect on those exam those situations, which many of us have been in, that will tell you a lot about leadership mm -hmm. and then build on it from there. So number one, reflect on what it feels like because that's what leadership really is about. Mm -hmm. How does it leave someone feeling? Yeah. And then focus on training because it doesn't stop. Um, I heard the saying, and I don't know who to attribute that to, but leadership is not a place, it's a process. Mm -hmm. So it's ongoing, continuous learning. Every day. It, every, every day. Every and day. You're, you're never great. You're striving for That's that. right. <laughs> exactly. So. By the way, that is something I say to um, my uh, clients and individuals that I'm coaching, is if you want to be that strong or great or effective leader, mm -hmm. you always have to be learning. Mm -hmm. Well, you guys, I can't believe how time has flown. Um, one thing that I want to say is I know you are busy in your organizations every day, but your leadership matters. You're in a very competitive market today for acquiring and retaining talent, and your leaders in your organizations are the ones that are going to make a difference with you being effective, so invest in them. Next time, here's what we're going to be talking about. HR. Wow, what is it? What does it really mean for you? What is the impact that it can have and what's critical for you to know. So come back and join us and until then we'll see you on the internet. Bye.